background information before the fun starts here. This was essentially developed together with Honor and Glory, another Cynthia Roth Rock movie by Godfrey Hall, as we see here. And uh, this had Hong Kong investors on, on it. And executive producer Grandmaster Tai Gim wanted to make an American martial arts picture, essentially using scouted talent, but also name talent uh, like Cynthia Roth Rock to market the movie with. And uh, merging it also with a Hong Kong style, a Hong Kong stunt crew. And uh, thus, Honor and Glory was born. Undefeatable was born uh, the same year or the year after. And it's also a B-movie action that's merged with a vicious serial killer plot. So here you go. It's a Hong Kong style movie, kind of. And also a bona fide YouTube sensation. Uh, because uh, one of the fights is very famous from this movie. And it's a popular movie. So many years after it was made, it's a cult classic, it has life, and it's due to its own energy, p present already in the movie, circa 1993. And it was also shot as a separate edit for the Asian market called Bloody Mary Killer, that was dubbed into Cantonese. And we're gonna stop here. Here's a, here's a scene that actually is not in the Hong Kong Cup. What you will find out as we talk about Undefeatable and Bloody Mary Killer, Undefeatable, the US edit here, has this subplot with uh, with uh, Don Neam's wife uh, going to a psychologist and being very s scared, you know, afraid for her life because her husband, <laughs> the sweaty man, <laughs> yeah. is abusive and engages in death matches. This is all cut from the Hong Kong version. None of this is uh, left, only bare mentions of it, which is a shame because I don't know how, wh what you guys feel, but these actresses, not these guys <laughs> these <laughs> actresses for psychologists uh, let's just uh, look up uh, look up the names here it's a lot of cost to keep track of but i really it's uh anna is played by uh, the wife is played by emily dabachak and the uh psycho psychiatrist uh, dr jennifer Simmons is played by donna jason i think they are the best actresses in this movie actors yeah mm. yeah, yeah i agree she, she's a fantastic crier emily actually mm. And it's not the cry in the sense of, you know, <laughs> she cries just, you know, a tear rolls down her cheek as, you know, she talks about this abusive life she has. And, you know, he abuses her as hard as he abuses people in the ring. <laughs> so it's a uh, it's a uh, it's a very dark start to the movie. Yeah, yeah. Def um, definitely helps to establish uh, his character. But, you know, before you even see him in a scene, you know, other than the, the fight scene, it really helps sort of uh, establish what kind of a guy he is. Mm -hmm. and, and it's not like Cynthia Rothrock is first on screen in this no. version, you know. She's uh, introduced like 10 minutes in, what have you. But uh, apparently the opening fight that we only see bursts of was shot during a 13-hour stretch for Don Neam uh, and uh, Avi Actor. Uh, that was the first day, and, uh, you know... Uh, Already, you know, the legendary Don has tapped into uh, intensity more than just fighting intensity. Mm. You know what I mean? And uh, it's certainly affecting to see her cry over this. I mean, it's, it's uh, you know, domestic abuse is, a, you know, a nasty thing in real life. And I think Godfrey is uh, tapping into something. As, but he's tapping into cheesy, wonderful B-movie acting as well. Yeah. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll obviously talk of the various actors here. And uh, we have the introduction of John Miller playing Inspector or Cop Nick DiMarco. And uh, John is, um, you know, extensively interviewed by uh, uh, Mike Fury, an um, interview you uh, uh, will actually link to. And uh, we'll, we'll talk of uh, John's uh, career all, uh, all throughout this uh, commentary. Uh, I, I got to say, by the way, that uh, this... Uh, uh, that all uh, again, that whole opening fight scene and the uh, and the opening with the psychologist is uh, replaced in the Hong Kong version by Robin Chu's first scenes with uh, Godfrey Ho, and then it cuts into this uh, robbery scene. So uh, that's uh, all completely replaced with alternate footage, as you'll uh, you'll see in the members only uh, members only section. You'll see all that alternate footage. That is really yeah, we shit. have a we have a few tearaways from a Judas Priest concert. <laughs> 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 every day you see a middle-aged gang member as well so that's cool. dude it was the 90s <laughs> <laughs> and still don's hair seems like uh, it was stuck in the 80s despite it. he you know godfrey ex uh, insisted that don neam's hair was that 
long in the movie, and it's immaculate. Classic. It's actually <laughs> absolutely spectacular. But before we <laughs> before we go into uh, Cynthia, um, I, I gotta mention one thing about this scene. I like that these like or like. I think it's odd that they, these are not underground fights. They are actually you know organized alleyway fights, illegal alleyway fights. <laughs> And these guys, you know, the the, su- the the suits beside the suit, they're they're not very intimidating. <laughs> <laughs> not really. I mean, and look at this guy with the chains all over him. You know, it's going to be a fiend. The fighters that Cynthia is uh, is fighting, they have uh, odd stylistic choices uh, behind yeah. them, so to say. Yeah. It almost looks sci-fi in design, but this is obviously not sci-fi. It's the nineties. Look at the wonderful. Oh, in like a like a ghetto S and M makeshift outfit. <laughs> <laughs> Which is well, why I always wear street balls myself. <laughs> it's like a weird kind of West Side Story or something. <laughs> but uh, while we watch uh, this fight, uh, anything, uh, anything, uh, uh, we want to start uh, talking about uh, Cynthia Rothrock a little bit before we uh, go into something else. So go ahead. Yeah, uh, you know, Cynthia was uh, born in uh, March, 8th of March, 1957. She uh, started training in uh, martial arts. The relatively late age of 13 but you know she displayed a natural gift uh, which ultimately led her to uh, fire black belts in different Korean and Chinese styles and uh, she's also five-time world karate champion in forms and weapons from 81 to 85 so she certainly knew her stuff and uh, And speaking speaking of knowing her stuff I mean I I like the the bursts of action in this movie it's not extensive hong kong action but i like some of the short fast bursts that mm. S- cynthia responds very well to in the scene with uh, john miller early in the robbery there, there's some bursts as well that i like very much they're not like boring american style martial arts action they're actually doing well. yeah it's done well as well and some of the yeah. stuntmen take really hard hits later in the film Oh, absolutely, the Hong Kong stunt guy. So, yeah, uh, yeah. And, and, and Cynthia responded to that uh, very well. That, that was, by the way, the no retreat, no surrender moment where, you know, where he says, don't touch the ground. It's like that, no retreat, no surrender. <laughs> Classy. So, uh, yeah. Uh, but uh, going back to Cynthia. Yeah. Um, yeah, 85 was the year which she made a film debut as well in um, 24 Hours to Midnight. Um and she began the uh, Hong Kong chapter of her career with uh, the Ko Yun directed Yes Madam. Um, and then in 86, uh, she was busy in Hong Kong as well, made uh, Millionaire's Express, uh, directed by Sam Hung and featuring just about everyone you could care to think of. Uh, with, and, uh, and she was not, by the way, just, uh, you know, the background Guaylo fighter. I mean, no, like now no. Cynthia was already respected. Mm. Yeah, I mean, then, you know, there was that. There was uh, uh, Right and Wrongs with uh, Yun Bu and uh, directed again by Corey Yun. And uh, uh, she had uh, even worked with Wong Jing in The Magic Crystal. As well. Oh, uh, sweet film. Yeah. Um, I, and... I would rather say I think she worked more with action director Tony Leung. Than yeah, Wong probably, Jing. yeah. That's just my theory. Yeah, it was uh, her and uh, Richard Norton in that one. Yes. And, and, uh, and uh, Robot Andy Lau. Who does very well in the action department in Magic Crystal? You know, watch Magic Crystal for Cynthia and Richard, but definitely for Andy Lau. As well. Yeah, so go ahead, David. I think we still have time to do some more Cynthia when we're watching some yeah, of the uh, w- worst actors here. <laughs> the, first, uh, the first notable film for her of the uh, new decade, the 1990s, was uh, uh, China O'Brien. Um, you know, directed by uh, Robert Klaus of uh, Enter the Dragon fame. Uh, it's, you know, pretty much considered the film that made a name uh, internationally. Um, is it actually a, a good film? Uh, if you guys have seen it, I, I haven't. I mean, yeah, is it, uh, it's not it. like, a, whoa, I can see a breakthrough here. Yeah, it definitely seems like, a, you know, there's a, there's a fairly well, uh, well-mounted production. It had a good, uh, a, fair, a fair budget behind it. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I mean, it's the start of a huge decade. She made a total of about 30 films in the 90s. It was definitely a, the high, uh, high walk mark of her career. Mm-hmm. You know, they made quite a few sequels. There was a, you know, a couple of, uh, a couple of Shino Bryans, 
you know, a couple of fast getaways. 